Louis Lemur was with us last year too at the Blockomics uh, 2.0. And uh, the first thing, of course, we're going to ask him is to, to have a little bit of a look back what happened in this year, this year of lots of things happening. And secondly, to share with us what will be happening in the next uh, 12 months. And do you want to take the microphone this one? Uh, yeah, I can do it. Click it. Then go to the oh. I give you 25 minutes. Yeah, that's right. Great. Yeah. Three. Oh. Oh. Is this one working? Can I? Have? Can you have? Yeah. yeah. Hello. I'm sorry. Don't speak Dutch. <laughs> yeah, I speak English for a French guy. So it's okay. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, yeah. So thank you for uh, welcoming me. Welcome me. Welcoming me. Wow, I'm, I'm tired <laughs> again, Guido. Uh, tonight, um, it's very difficult for me not even to uh, speak uh, as the last speaker, <laughs> and also uh, to address the Dutch audience in English, especially on what's going to happen. <laughs> that's that's a challenge. So I think I'm going to be much more modest and and uh, have a look with you on. Uh, several uh, trends that we saw and uh, also um, try to share with you a few, uh, a few stories in, in, a, few, uh, uh, in, in, in a, a brief uh, period of time. Um, that's the only uh, corporate slide I have. I, I know I'm talking in front of some bloggers, so uh, the trend is less and less corporate and I'm like that too. But just, you know, we have, what are the news? We have 15 million blogs uh, worldwide now. Um, many in Europe, it's growing very fast, uh, on most brands that you may know, Typepad, most of it, uh, is probably the best uh, now, and growing very strong, we've been, I will not, you know, spend too much time, but the company is now 120 employees, based in uh, San Francisco, in Paris, uh, and a little bit in Europe also, we have Martin in uh, the Dutch part of uh, Belgium. Um, and uh, Japan, we have about 40 people in, in, in Japan and trying to, uh, starting to do deals in China too. So uh, blogging is really uh, global and growing in all areas and uh, I'm very happy to see that Europe is growing uh, so fast. Very interesting though, which is something I don't have on the slide, if you look at the European market, the more you go north, the less blogging there is. And you know, it's very difficult to explain, but if you go to Germany, for example, uh, well, basically, there is almost no blogging in Germany. If you go to Latin countries, um, France is quite big. You have four million, not us, but total is about four million blogs there um, with uh, an extreme growth. It's uh, like every day in the media and also a lot of audience. There is a, uh, I'm jumping out of the slides so a little bit just to uh, kind of uh, be, uh, uh, you know, more on a, on a conversational basis, but we have a, uh, um, a, an affiliate of Nielsen called Mediametry, which is measuring the media, as you know, in, in most countries, that have started measuring blogs uh, and the audience of blogs in France. And it's their like, second survey now. And um, I, was, I was, you know, very uh, surprised by the, the number they, they came up with, but seven million French people read blogs on a regular basis. And if you compare this to the number of people who read the press, Seven million. So it's not, you know, it's not nothing. It's like the same number of people are reading the press as uh, people who uh, read blogs. Read, don't create huh, uh, in France. It's, you know, the explanation is probably that uh, there are cultural reasons. I, I like to laugh about uh, my country saying, you know, we are the country of strikes and demonstrations and, you know, revolution. And so <laughs> probably they like to express themselves. I don't know. And Spain and Italy are growing very, very fast as well. Let's say conversational, Latin, Latin style countries like it, probably. And Germans are maybe less, you know, Wiki, Wikipedia is, is growing like crazy there. <laughs> so probably less egocentric. And uh, here uh, in, in, in Amsterdam, you know, with weblogs of the Nile and others, uh, blogging catches up very fast. But if you go to a Nordic region, yeah. there is no blogging. I mean, we have we have typepad, uh, uh, we have typepad Finland, and uh, it's like hundreds of accounts. It's very few. It's uh, interesting. They do something else. They have MySpace type of things, but uh, they don't do blogging. So I'll come back to that if you're interested. Um, 
you know, that's, that's all about our products. I'm, I'm here if you need more. Basically on Typepad, one interesting thing maybe is we launched uh, widgets in the U United States. If you don't know what it is, uh, we had uh, hundreds of partners who wanted to integrate content in our uh, blogs or in the blogs of our partners. And so the way we did it is you can now uh, create a small uh, module that you can put, that bloggers can put if they wish uh, on the side of their blogs. And that can do e-commerce, that can do search, it can do many uh, different uh, uh, things. So we can accept hundreds of uh, different uh, external content in our blogs. And we'll launch that in Europe in about a month. Um, so, you know, like e-commerce sites or uh, search engines can integrate very easily now uh, into uh, uh, actually all, all blogs, but mostly uh, Typepad. Um, so just, you know, why? Why all that? It's difficult also to speak at the end of the day because you, you know, you, you heard a lot, which I didn't understand. <laughs> so a little bit. I, I like the Catholic uh, uh, story <laughs> from what I could hear. But, um, you know, why? Why is, is, is it still uh, like this? Well, first, you know, the news is that it's still growing. Um, what happened since last year? Well, you know, if you, like at the, if you look at the pace at which the blogosphere is growing, this is doubling uh, still every five months. This is Technorati chart, based on Technorati, 35 million, I think, blogs now in Technorati. And uh, it started in 03, and it's today. And, you know, it, it's always interesting because people keep telling me when will this stop, and it doesn't, right? It's still growing. So, so we like that, of course. But, you know, this is one of the trends which is, which is the most dramatic in growth since the uh, start of the web, I think, uh, really. And this is, of course, uh, good news. So, no news here, basically, it's still the same, growing. Um, I, I, I uh, hear from uh, Guido that nobody has talked about the long tail. Are, are you all familiar with this? Who is familiar with the long tail? Wow, enough wired, as you know. But, I think this, you know, basically explains the underlying phenomenon where basically since the uh, beginning of print we've been focusing on this side of the media and of the music, you know, the Britney Spears and all the stars are here, high audience, very few people, and now we have this, which is high number of amateurs, small audience, but if you look at France, this is already 7 million people reading it on a regular basis. So it's not replacing the professionals, it's a new content, uh, most of it that complements it. So I'm not spending more time on the long tail, which is good, as you all know it. Which is something also, you know, I think one of the big, big trends is, uh, as I, I've been traveling a lot and, and, and meeting, uh, you know, in several uh, countries, bloggers and, 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 and companies. And I, I think one of the other trends is that the world is really getting flat. Do you know of this book, The World is Flat? It's by Thomas Friedman, it's really, really good. I've just read it. And, uh, I, I can't feel it more. I mean, I went to Spain to exactly this uh, type of conference, to Bilbao, like a month ago, same, 300 people. And, you know, we talk about the same thing. And one of the thing, I, uh, one of the phenomena I, I, I feel the most is that it's bridging as well. It's, I, I mean, if you remember, Europe was late compared to uh, Silicon Valley. It's still a little bit, right? But, you know, it's, it's bridging. You can hear podcasts from, you know, startup there, from Dig Nation, if you know them. Uh, you, can, you, you can read their blogs, TechCrunch, uh, if you don't know TechCrunch, have a look. I'm not online, unfortunately, so I cannot show you. Who knows TechCrunch? Wow. <laughs> you know, you, there's no point in doing presentations anymore. <laughs> <That's really laughs> you know, I like it. Actually, I have some, like, sometimes, not with this audience, but in, in France, I had last week a conference like that in front of 150 head of marketing uh, in very large companies. And I can tell you when you say, who knows, who knows the long tail, nobody is, you know, move, nobody moves. So you're probably the ones teaching them, which is, which is great. But it makes it difficult for me. <laughs> but uh, no, that's, that's really good because we, we, I think we can learn very, very fast now, which is, a, which is a, an amazing trend. So no more on the long tail. If you know all the stories I'm going to share, I have a problem. If you look uh, on what's happening, the big trend I think now for us six apart, not only is to uh, take this from the geeks or from experts from this room, which is uh, only experts apparently, to mainstream. And that's not an easy task. You know, like our goal as a company with 15 million blogs now is to take it to the friends of the bloggers, to your friends. 
the friends, you know, the people who don't blog, the people who don't want to blog, who don't understand why we are all doing it, <laughs> or why we are podcasting, which is even more weird for them. And, you know, the, it's a real challenge to, to do that. Um, if, you, if you think about how the long tail is, is shaping, you know, everything, basically, you, you can think of uh, citizens, we're going to talk briefly, journalists, the media is, of course, being transformed, even though it's slower than I thought, and I think you said that earlier, but I agree, I mean, even though we have about 17 media companies in Europe working with uh, our tools, um, it's, 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 it's slow, it's, it's quite slow to, uh, to, to change. Politicians, uh, <coughs> advertising, e-commerce, I think the long tail will be not only a book by Chris Anderson, but uh, one of the concepts that will be uh, uh, driving the economy in the next 10 or 20 years, I really think so. Um, so, so what's happening? You know, how do we take this to mainstream? Well, uh, you know, one of the points that uh, media have not talked about much is private blogs. Um, you know, the ones that nobody talks about. So you can talk about private blogs for corporations, of course, uh, but these are kind of secret. We have many, like using either mobile type or other tools, but uh, Nokia has uh, started a year ago uh, with one blog inside the company. Um, it was basically one of you, you know, who knew it and said, oh, I'll install the blog software and I'll, I'll try uh, and play with it. Now they have hundreds of them. And it replaces some parts of the internet. Same with the French company Alcatel. And I'm, I'm, you know, I'm very impressed on how they, they deal with it because Alcatel internally not only has many blogs replacing, you know, the Lotus Quick Place and all the internet tools, most of them they don't use, which they say, by blogs because they are very simple. So this is really happening. I think internally you don't you don't see them. Some people uh, call that the, call them the dark blogs, right? <laughs> uh, because they are not uh, on the public space. Um, so this is happening now. If you look in public, this is more. We have a third, one third of our blogs are password protected, and the media and press never talk about that because it's not like spectacular. You know, this is about you know you and me going on holidays and not willing to share our life with everybody. So this is not about the ego bloggers, like I am. <laughs> <laughs> this, is, this is about something different. And uh, we, we try to work a lot on, on this, and of course on Typepad you can have password protected blogs and you can all only share a password with uh, who you like. But there's something different to this. We also learned that blogs become more and more important to the people. If you share two years of your life on a blog, it's important for you. If you share, you know, I am very impressed always by uh, 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 mothers who give birth and put on the blog the uh, pictures of the baby from the birth or even before the birth into, you know, for a year or two. And this is mostly private. They, you know, my, my wife doesn't have, you know, a, she doesn't want to share anything with anybody else and the family and the friends. Only for these people. And so, uh, we are launching a product which is called Comet, uh, which is a code name, and I, I can't share much with you. It's, it's pretty soon, but basically this is what kept us busy uh, 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 on top of, of course, launching uh, our partners. Um, and you'll see this product in a few weeks, and this is basically focusing on this. So, how to get it to the masses, because we don't call 15 million blocks worldwide masses, of course. So this will have a lot of privacy in it. When you, one of the new things which I can share is when you blog, today you blog either for a password protected blog or you blog to like everybody, right? So we'll have levels. So you can say you blog to your friends, you can blog to your family, and your blog will change, will be different according to who reads it. It sounds like very easy, uh, but that's one of the big uh, change we, we've made. Um, and we'll, we'll make it very easy to do private because we think the volume will come from these people who don't want, who don't have a huge ego and don't want to share their lives with uh, everybody. So if you look at uh, quickly uh, uh, in the time I have on you know how people react, I think there are citizens first that claim the long tail, and this is an example. There are hundreds, and you know them, and you have others here in, in the Netherlands. But this is Pascal who uh, is blogging about cooking. And you know her uh, traffic growth is like the long tail in reverse. She started blogging for her friends about French cooking, and it grew. Now it's about 200,000 page views per month, 100,000 unique visitors. She has uh, two uh, chronicles in the press. She has a book which is out. 
So she's on the other side, on the blue side, on the professional side. And we see more and more on these. And uh, I think somebody asked how many people you know, get revenues from their blogs. Uh, this is very few. But some people are getting you know, a lot of attraction. And I think we'll see more and more. 450,000 people get revenues from eBay, as you probably know. 150,000 worldwide get uh, a, a full-time job revenue from eBay, leave from their eBay revenue. We think on the blogs it's going to happen the same. But it's gonna, it takes time. Takes time. So the best ones will be able to. They are so passionate, so expert, so good about what they are doing. The tools for advertising on blogs are improving. Uh, not only Google AdSense, but also you know all the ones you know, uh, affiliate, you know, uh, or advertisers are starting to get it. Um, I mean, Pascal wrote a book, and and she's very very well known for that now. So these are amateurs getting uh, you know to the uh, to the uh, expert stage, citizens now. Uh, who knows about the Vichy case study? What? Well, okay, cool. <laughs> you know, this is like live, like if I was blogging it and getting the feedback immediately, do, do you know about it? Because otherwise I'll get on my, you, you'll be on my blog saying, we know that, but you don't get out. <laughs> so, thank you for the live feedback. Corporate blogging, just a little bit on that. Um, it's getting bigger in France, but it's very slow also to adopt. Why? Because, you know, brands are scared to death by this thing. Scared to death by 60 million people talking about their uh, digital cameras and their, you know, new phones. And, and of course, what do you prefer? Do you prefer friends to tell you what they think about the product? Or do you prefer an advertising? Of course, the friends, right? So, just briefly, I give you this case study about uh, Vichy, which is a L'Oreal brand. As you know, you have Vichy here too, right? And uh, they did everything wrong. Everything wrong. So I, I'm using it, it's very well known in France now, it's a case study at business schools in France of what you shouldn't do. <laughs> right. So what they've done is, they, they, you know, it's like fashionable to do a blog, okay, we'll do a blog, uh, cool, you know, the agency does a press release, a Vichy has a new blog, you know, so it goes in the press and so on, and the bloggers like you and me are like, hmm, oh, interesting, you know, it's like, they have the guts, they have uh, some, uh, you know, they, they they want to try, it's interesting. And what they do is they put this picture first. And if you look at the picture, even you on the back, you can see, I'm, I'm pretty sure, uh, you know, you girls and women in the room, do you ever take a picture of yourself like this? <laughs> you know, it's the first thing, you know, that struck me. It's like, this is fake. This is, immediately I knew it was fake. So this is a model. The text is a copywriter who wrote it extremely well, you know, and it's all, so, so well done by an agency that it sounds not authentic, not true. Immediately, bloggers started talking about it. They started doing a second so not, not authentic, not tra transparent, pure advertising, doesn't work. Second mistake, they started to have comments from people who said exactly what I said. They shut down the comments. They deleted the criticism. You know, they did second mistake. Right? Because they felt what's happening is they are losing control over their communication. Completely. Companies are losing control. Because if you, if you start trying to control that, actually bloggers will take it to their blogs, as you know, of course, right? So this is our French kryptonite story, if you like, <laughs> if you know kryptonite. And so, so they, they did that, and of course, uh, quickly, the, uh, you know, uh, uh, they then opened the comments, finally, they got it. Uh, uh, the uh, influencers, the uh, A-list bloggers started all to jump on it. Uh, and you know, it, it took a few days where we were all laughing at them uh, for Le Monde to put it on a cover page. <laughs> and when Le Monde puts it on a cover page, then it's not bloggers anymore. You know, it's, it's Owen Jones, the CEO of L'Oréal, who is like, you know, what's happening is that's a PR problem that is growing, right? So what they did is interesting, and uh, uh, I think it's, they, they did good. I, I should say I, I blogged so much about how bad it was that they, you know, I helped them a little bit, so I, I have kind of a conflict here, but they apologized. Have you ever seen a brand apologize? They apologized on a the blog. They put their own picture, so this is the team, this is Delphine who did this. They put the picture, you know, I told them, you should, you should do it. People don't trust you. You've lost completely trust, so you have to do that. You went to, imagine the head of PR at L'Oréal, who was like, what? You, you know, you want the picture of the employees there and apologize? So they did that. And they started saying, well, you know, we did a mistake, we're sorry. Like normal humans. And they said, you know, we don't know what to do as a brand. Tell us what we should do. 
And Blogger started to have a good, you know, a very good uh, reaction, saying, you know, how Vichy learns from its mistakes, uh, saying, you know, uh, uh, started to say new things. And basically, what the Blogger said is, we want the real story. We want what bloggers, you know, we want what consumers think about this product. And they started inviting real customers, you know, test the product. So this is a cream. I'm not really in the target for that anti-aging cream. Uh, I am actually, but not. It's for women. <laughs> um, and and and. Basically, they uh, started giving uh, uh, feedback. They did, uh, you know, a lot of meetings with the customers, treated them as VIPs, and gave feedback, real feedback, including the negative one, like "Can I go under the sun with it?" things like that. And basically, they turned the buzz into a positive one, which the press has picked up, and so on. Um, you know, so what's the learning here? Is like, of course, be authentic, you know, but like brands should not do it if they don't get it, which I always tell them. I tell them, you know. You should, you should read what people have to say, you should technorate yourself, Google yourself, you know, follow the comments, find the influencers. Alcatel has done an amazing job in a matrix where they had two axes, you know, and one axis was uh, expertise in telecom, as this is the telecom industry, so is the guy knowledgeable or not, and the other axis was influence, based on number of links, you know all that, right? They positioned the bloggers, identified the 10 key bloggers, treated them as journalists. And now I think many brands are doing that, which is great. They uh, you know, send them samples, they invite them to uh, all their events, and I think they, they start to get it. Now, some brands start again. Uh, one good story I have is a, a blog, I don't have it on screen, called Détournement, with an S. Uh, it's people who probably, said, like some of you, hate being dressed as everybody else. Fashion, you know, with some women uh, uh, so started customizing their clothes their jeans, you know, their, uh, everything they wear. They started changing things. And they started a blog called Détournement. And they also call themselves as a community as Les Détourneuses, the people who change the fashion, right? And uh, there is a jeans brand, I think it's Levi's, who started sponsoring this blog. And this was very, very good, uh, you know, uh, well seen. And a brand arriving on this type, you know, this way, was very well seen, like supporting the community but not trying to, uh, you know, say bullshit, basically. Another good, good example is uh, michel Edouard Leclerc, who is the CEO of a very large uh, distribution group, Leclerc in France, like Carrefour, and uh, he's been blogging for two years now, one year and a half, he still blogs, so you ask me, you know, does he still do it, he still does it, and now it's amazing, what he writes is taken by the French AFP, the AP, to the press directly. The journalists wouldn't read it before because they were like, oh no, we call him, you know, we, we don't read his blog. Now they all read his blog. And they all take it directly. He's, I was, you know, listening last week to France Info and they would say, Michel Edouard Leclerc said on his blog that, you know. So now if you ask him, most CEOs will tell you, I don't have the time. If you ask him, do you have the time? He will say, well, look, you know, this is my PR, my, my best PR now. It goes directly to the AP. Uh, I have all the experts reading me my competitors reading me, my customers. So it's, it's kind of successful, but it's difficult. That leads me to a, a question, you know, which I'm sure you're interested in. Is there an advertising 2.0? I think so. I just think we don't know what it is yet. But it's basically, you know, we don't want marketing anymore. We don't want, you know, uh, the official story anymore. We want the word of mouth. So, as I said, you know, like Nokia did it as well, identify the key bloggers and uh, uh, treat them as journalists. Text ads, Google AdSense, this is not intrusive. If you think about it, you know, this goes against everything we've learned in advertising. You know, I was an ad, I web an ad agency 10 years ago, and I had one, a small one. And basically, you know, you have no creative, no design, right? You have, it's limited to really the, the text. And also, you don't buy, as you know, you, you only buy the result. You click, and you don't buy, you know, like the audience you get. And so this is against everything we've learned in marketing. Like, what I think is we should unlearn what we've learned. <laughs> and it's not easy. You know, I always say, how much Google has invested in advertising? Have you ever seen a Google ad uh, for themselves? No, right? Two billion dollars in revenues last quarter. Skype? Have you seen a Skype ad? Probably not. Or, you know, maybe a few, but very, very, you know. So this is something happening that we don't understand, which is only based on word of mouth. 
And that's something we're just learning. I'm not just you know, trying to teach anything I don't know, basically. But I think we're heading to the long tail of advertising as well. So getting the advertisers, getting these 100 people ahead in the room last week who were lost, basically, to understand that they can advertise on great radio, which is a great podcast on wine in the US, which is launching now in, in Europe. Uh, they have six months of advertising sold on the podcast already. And they only talk to like 50,000 people. But if these 50,000 people listening to Grape Radio are the wine crazy people, ambassadors, you know, the influencers, the key people you want on the wine industry, these are the guys you want to touch. You don't care about buying you know, a 2 million audience ad for a small, tiny audience like that. So this is new forms of, of advertising which we need to, you know, that advertisers will learn and are learning, that uh, buying agencies will learn, media buying agencies, and, and the agencies themselves learn. I should say in France, most advertising agencies don't understand anything about that. Don't, don't tell them I said that. But, you know, three, like three of them understand it. And I think, so I've put Adam Curry here because, of course, you know, he's Dutch. But I listen to his podcast. Is he? Actually, he's not, right? He, he, easy? Yeah. Because he speaks so good English. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. And uh, I can't anyway. I'm sorry? You must be Dutch too then. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I don't speak English like he does. Uh, but I, I listen to him as I run. So I listen to his podcast all the time. And I think you talked about Sensei earlier as well. But one of the things I like is his experiment right now on this. Like they had this Earthling ad in the podcast. We are Earthling, you know it if you listen to it. And people started saying, hey, we don't want this ad anymore, you know. It's not for us, this is a radio ad. And they started creating, you know, I think we are heading into user-generated ads. Like, we like the brand, here's what we'd like. You know? And I don't know how, what form it will take. But, you know, think about it. If you have ideas, I'm done? Yes. No, I, done now? Yeah, I'm going to ask you a question. Because okay. No, I mean, it's, it's just, you know, like basically, I wanted to insist on, on the things which don't exist yet. And I think this is very, you know, if you have ideas on that, uh, you, you, should, you should not cut me like this. No, let me ask you a question. Okay, go ahead. The question is, you mentioned before, why is it so difficult for media companies? That's something we have been talking about all day. Mm -hmm. And you mentioned it as well. You would expect the media companies to... It's great because that was my next one. <laughs> uh, thank you, Guido. No, uh, I had actually a, a seminar on that with the French press editors uh, this morning. And uh, I shared that with them. Um, uh, what media should do. So thanks, Guido. Um, quickly, though, because otherwise you'll jump on me. Um, I think one of the things is obviously to you know launch blogs, and we have 17 partners around Europe, and 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 you know uh, uh, of course the also media has blogs here. So you know there is some of course blogging in the media uh, right now happening, which is great. But I think what they miss most of them, at least in France, I don't know here, is the most simple things, which you as blogger probably know. Create content which is compatible with us. We want to link to you. Be linkable. Most of the press in France, you don't have permalinks. Or you have uh, archive under password. Or you don't have the news of the day because it's paying for our subscribers and so on. And I think it's a huge threat for them. And the money they get usually from archives is very close to zero. So I think, you know, I always tell them to jump and put this online. Um, um, and, and I think it's so, so it's like a, uh, you know, be searchable or die, be linkable or die, which is not mine, you know, it's Dan Gilmore's, but I, I really like it. And I, I, I'm amazed we still don't get that. It's so simple. Second, why not? Why not? Why? why? <laughs> because I don't know, they are afraid. Well, why not? Because I was talking to them this morning actually. What they say is look, you know, we have X subscribers to print. If we put all that for free, it's going to decrease. But I think these are not the same people. And I, I don't think, I actually know that usually it's, these are not the same people that want this or the ones who read, read the print. So it's like jumping, they have to jump now. We are not in 99 anymore. We are in 2006, lots of people. Sorry, go ahead. Is it not also a copyright question? I talked to a uh, commercial manager of, of FTL uh, some weeks ago and he said it's very, very difficult to put uh, things online because of copyright uh, questions. Yeah. yeah, that's one of, the, uh, one of the things. The other one is comments. I, I like comments on every single article. This is not like blog. I mean, this is like blogging, but it's, it's just, you know, comments. Do you have comments in most of the press in, in Dutch, in, you know, in, in Netherlands? At the end of the articles, yeah? 
We don't. Le Figaro, no comments, because the journalists don't want comments. You know, they, they don't want this feedback, you know, this correction. So this is very simple. So blogs, of course, uh, links, external links. Most of the press sites don't have external links because they are scared to death to lose their audience to somewhere else. Whereas bloggers and Google, you know, we keep our time sending people to some, some other place, saying, okay, well, I don't really know that. I've seen this. If you're interested, go and check yourself. Where we teach the readers to, you know, basically be uh, criticism, uh, have his own critic uh, sense. And so I think this is important too. And the only external links they have is to advertising. So that's the answer to. Uh, so start podcasting. Can I finish on that? It show you a funny podcast. You know, some funny podcast. So uh, podcasting is very big in France. So start podcasting as well. It was my last bullet. I think newspapers have to do that too. But so it can be from the very boring. Very, so just here, I, I don't know here, but in France, like. If you're a radio station and you don't have a podcast, you're weird. They all podcast. Like blogs were big, podcasts big already. TV stations, radio stations, they all do it. So it goes for, from the very boring, which is that. Can I have some? Ah, here we go. So this is just the journal, you know, the TV news. This is super boring. And, you know, this is like uh, putting, you know, news in the refrigerator. <laughs> you, know, you took it and you, you have it frozen. And basically, what's, you know, so it's good because I listen to it when I want. I'm pushing it a bit. It's cool. It's when I want, how I want, you know, that's really cool. But it's not the point, right? We know we want the conversations and so on. So it can be this, it can be super boring as well, and I, I, I promise uh, Guido I'm, I'm done. <laughs> but uh, my, my, my window is so, yeah, I mean, it can be this as well. Celebrities and crowds thrown to the super new event BMW <laughs> Oracle <laughs> Racing Team base at the American BMW. in it's Valencia. Like... <laughs> so, you know, so brands start to do it too, this is not in France, but it's like boring. They still don't, you know, they don't get it's something else. It's not putting, you know, an ad or something different. So let me show you, I'm not saying everybody should do that, but let me show you a, a, a funny one, which is uh, somebody in, a, in an agency actually who has done it. And this is about the French strikes. And that's going to be the last one. because I'm going to explain very complicated things to understand. You know, it's the CPE, Contrat Premier Embauche. It's the reason why all the French students made such a big revolution in the streets during these last three months. And the government yesterday said, okay, okay, it's over, forget the CPE. And uh, I'm trying to explain. It's a CPE! It's a CPE! It's a CPE! What are you doing, Brenda? I am fighting against the law. This how the inmate in law. You know, with this law, you can fire anyone without an explanation. You are in the first two years in the company. This is a serious subject, Brandon. We have to fight. Yourself in the street. Here's a CPE. But what? Maybe the boss of the company doesn't want to fire you if you're good at me. So you can see. So, so this is called, if you want to check it, as you see, it's in English. Bonjour-america.com. I am done. It's very funny. It's a guy doing it. 100,000 people uh, see it already. It's so been a month old. And I think he's got, he's got, he gets it, you know. It's like making fun of the French, making fun of the Americans. And it's a new way to approach you know, the news. It's really deep into politics and so on in a new way. Thanks very much. We want people that want to meet you. So, uh, yes. <laughs> uh, can I just switch to Dutch? And then yes, please, even, please. We gaan nu allemaal samen met Link en Mooi. Iedereen is er nog. Ik zou iedereen willen vragen of jullie allemaal meegaan. En verzamelen gaan we samen drinken. Iedereen nog. Praten en hartstikke bedankt voor de fijne middag.